Okay. Here, here's a few things that I think will happen here pretty soon. Let's hear. I think the Fed coin is coming out very soon. I that's I, so interesting. If I had a yeah. prediction for the next five years, the, like one thing I was going to put money on is the Fed coin or whatever I want to call it, the U.S. dollar coin. Yeah. A cryptocurrency dollar is coming out very soon. I agree. The Fed's already signaled what they're doing, yeah. um, and I think that will re in, in, in reset reset in a lot of ways yeah. the dollar. Yeah. Um, secondly, a, a, a strong point for the dollar. We've seen this, uh, okay, start of COVID. What happened, right? Everyone's sold. So you had, it was crazy. Bill Ackman, kids yeah. on CNBC. This is like, so March. Right. Everyone's starting to get worried, right, about, about uh, COVID. Yeah. He gets on CNBC and he goes, all hell is about to break loose. This thing's going to be terrible. It's going to kill everybody. What's going on, y'all? Welcome to another episode of the bullpen. I got a real treat for you guys because this dude right here is probably is a definition of a young badass motherfucker, right? Like this dude has done some serious shit, and I, I'm so excited to have you on, brother Bridger Pennington. Thanks for coming dude, on, dude. Good to have you, bro, on the bullpen here. I know, dude. Man, this I'm is excited. quite a treat, dude. It's funny because what people don't know is like I like I've been following you for a while. We just connected not too long ago, mm -hmm. but we're both here in Utah. Yep. And it, I'm like, how have we not similar connected? age? Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, you're 26, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. I'm 20. Yeah. So like we've, I, but I'm like, how have I not connected to this dude sooner? Yep. You know? I know. But just to give you guys an idea of what, like, just how badass this dude is, let me just kind of give you guys an idea right here. So Bridger is the founder of two investment funds that have done over 217 deals in the last four years. He has started helping others launch their own funds through Investment Fund Secrets, an online program with over 4,000 students. That's a big deal. That's a big deal. Well, because I, lo I love looking at the numbers, but what I love looking at more is the number of students. That's a big fucking deal, right? That many people buying into what you've done massive, right? So you help these people design design this to help them start their investment funds without working on Wall Street or having an Ivy League degree, which is all bullshit to me. So I agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Bridger has spoken on stage to thousands of people across the United States and is determined to help entrepreneurs scale their businesses through launching their own funds. Brother, how have we not yeah. connected sooner? I man? know, it's fun. Well, here we are. Here, <laughs> here we, we are. are. We're doing it. It's We're fine. doing it. You're on yep. the bullpen. But dude, yep. okay, 4,000 students, right? You, you've launched some serious funds with a lot of capital. Like we're not even talking about the number that you've helped people raise. Yeah, we just, and we just, yeah, we just exited that second fund. So okay, about a wow. few months ago, we, I'm launching two more funds right now. So we have a crypto fund coming out wow. uh, probably three weeks from now. Maybe yeah. the time this airs, it'll be yeah. out. We've, we've soft raised about 15 million for that right now. Wow. It'll launch. We're hoping to hit a $50 million in the first six months. Anyways, we'll see though. Dude. And we have a real estate fund coming out. We've raised about 50, 60 million. Right That's now what I'm saying. One. Like yeah. people don't really like, I'm, I'm, I'm listening soft, but it's like, these are some big numbers that yeah. you put up. Right. And then what you've helped your students and other people with their funds. Great. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. That's in the hundreds of millions of dollars. What you've helped other people do, right? Yeah, it's it's we well, and I don't take. I mean, our students are doing their own thing, right? Of course, we well, just, that's something you've advised them on. Teach them, them on. and help them. That they've crushed. We have we have uh, two funds that are nearing or over hundred million dollars, dozen plus funds from ten to twenty million, and then we have one fund. In 18 months, they've raised $900 million. They have $2.5 billion under management in what? 18 months. It's just okay, crazy. Okay, so almost a billion dollars, dollars, and this is a student of yours, right? Obviously, yeah. they put in the work on their own, but you've helped advise them and helped coach them on, right? Yeah, 100%. Brother, you're yeah. 26 years old. You're in one of the biggest uh, you know, industries you could possibly be in. You're, you're basically tackling Wall Street and those bastards out there, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, what's your story, bro? Like, yeah. seriously, like what, what made you this dude? Like, where did this fucking come from? Yeah, well, let's dive into it. And sorry for my voice, but I, I told you I've it's got a sexy. raspy. It's kind of nice, though, it's isn't it? It's kinda, I might yeah. keep it, yeah. All you dudes out there listening to that raspy. No, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll go and feel free to interrupt me or whatever. Go but for um, it, bro. Yeah, I, I started, I grew up in Utah, mm -hmm. a super entrepreneurial household. I grew up in, I would say, a regular house. Yeah. Um, went to college, started six businesses my first year to college. So what? I just got into college, and we can talk about that more, but I my goal of college was to make money. The reason I'm here mm -hmm. is to either find a great career or a great business, whatever, to solve the money problem. Yeah. And so I did, I literally like they were, I did a Chinese tutoring business. I hey, did wait, wait, what Chinese tutoring. You, <laughs> so I, I speak Mandarin Chinese. You speak Mandarin. Okay. Fine. I did an LDS mission in Taiwan. So I spoke Mandarin. I came <laughs> that's, home. That's an easy language to learn. Though. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we had, I mean, we had what, six tutors. We were tutoring kids. Anyways, 
Wow. No margins in that business though at all. <laughs> we, I, I wholesale two houses. We were building websites for people. Wow. I was just this, you know, the, the classic young hustler, just trying sure. crap, right? Doing the Gary Vee stuff. Oh yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Right. Whatever, Whatever I can find on YouTube. You found some I, shoes, you flip it. them. Yeah. You go into, yeah. All that stuff. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So finally my dad grabs me mm -hmm. and he, he goes, Bridger, you're kind of like a chicken with your head cut off. He goes, I want you to go meet with my business partner. <laughs> I said, cool. I'll, I'll go meet with whoever. Yeah. And he sets up this appointment. I, I drive to this guy's house. I pull up to this beautiful gated community. Mm. And I, I pull around the corner and I'm like, wow, these are some big houses. Yeah. And I pull up to the top of this hill and there's this gorgeous, gorgeous white home mm. that's almost encompassing this cul-de-sac. And I was like, shoot. Where is like, this, by the way? Who's it's Here up in Pepperwood. Oh, okay, yeah. all right, yeah. And I'm like, it it's, it's a nice, nice neighborhood and <laughs> yeah. up on that area, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, dang, like who's my dad's business partner? This guy's legit. Yeah, right. And I'm like, we, you know, my dad drives a car with 300,000 miles on it. You know what I mean? Like, really? who is this guy? Mm. And so anyways, I, I pull out, I go knock on the door, and I'm worried like a butler is going to come and, you know, be gone peasant, like get out of here, you know? And I'm like, oh, anyways, a little nervous, right? Yeah. A little nervous. And I, this guy answers the door, like, Bridger, come on in. He brings me in. I, you know, we uh, walk in, there's the basketball court, the grand piano, the wine cellar, the cars, the whole thing. Everything, right? yeah. And I come and sit down and lock, to make a long story short, I finally ask him, I go, how did you get all of this? Mm. How'd you do this? Mm. You know, like, yeah, that's, and he, and he goes, Bridger, it's funny. Not a lot of people ask me that question. Yeah. And I was like, oh shoot. Like, I don't know if that offended yeah. you. I don't, I don't know if you're not supposed to ask rich people that question. Uh -huh. That was, that was literally the only question I had was yeah. how did you do this? He goes, no, 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 it's it. fine. Yeah. And he goes, let me tell you. He goes, in my twenties, I was a lot like you. Mm -hmm. He goes, I actually had some moderately successful businesses. I had employees, mm -hmm. I did all this kind of stuff. And I finally though, he goes, then I figured out the secrets of the ultra wealthy. Mm. He goes, the ultra wealthy families of the world, mm -hmm. the Rockefellers, the Vanderbilts, these huge families, what they do is they send their kids to the best universities. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they cheat to get them in. We've seen that in the news, right? Yes. And stuff. Yeah. They want those kids to go work in consulting, investment banking, and eventually get into the fund world. Mm. So the world of private equity, of hedge funds, of mm. venture capital, or to come back home and run the family office. Mm. And he's like, I met a guy. He's one of the wealthiest people I ever met that ran a private equity fund. And he mm. said, I don't care how long it takes me. I don't care if it gives me one year, five years, or 20 years. I was going to figure out what a fund is and how to start one. And anyways, mm -hmm. and he's like, that's what we did. He goes, we went and launched an investment fund. And he goes, right now we manage just over $8 billion of real estate. It's not, that's a, that's to, not bad. To put that into perspective, <laughs> okay, $8 billion, billion would be Cardone Capital, Grant Cardone. Yeah. They manage just over $2 billion. That's right. I saw him post about that not too long ago, right? So they this just is that number. They were stoked about Yeah, it. $2 yeah. Billion, which is great. That's not right, that, sure. But this is five years ago. Yeah. These guys were managing eight billion. Now yeah. today they're over twenty plus billion dollars they have, which is crazy. You know, ten yeah. X Cardone's funds, right? That's crazy. Yeah. And so I was super intrigued. I was like, what is this world, right? Of funds and mm -hmm. and all this stuff we can talk about in just a second. But yeah. um I go, I I've heard from podcasts like this, find a yeah. mentor, right? Find a mentor. Bro. And so I'm sitting there in this guy's house and I'm like, I'm like, hey can you teach me? Like, yeah. I'm ready to learn. I'm, yeah. I'll do whatever. I'll go get uh -huh. you coffee. I'll do anything. But like, teach me this <laughs> yeah. thing. And he goes, he goes, I want to learn about funds. I want to get in this game of private equity hedge funds. And, and he goes, Bridger, go talk to your dad. Because your dad knows way more than I do. I said, no, no, no. My dad's poor. We live in a, you know, crappy house. I want to learn from you. Uh -huh. Like you're rich. And he goes, Bridger, um, sorry to break it to you, but, uh, me and your dad make about the same amount of money. Well, <laughs> and, <laughs> and my chin about drops to the floor. I was like, huh? Like, come again. He goes, yeah, I mean, we're pretty much equal business partners. In this, I, I left the dude's house. You didn't know I, that your dad was a, like in this $8 billion. No, fund I mean, I knew that they were, but he had started so many businesses. Yeah. Like he had, he had 13 business tries before this one. Anyways, I never knew my dad did kind of a thing. And anyways, I drive straight to my dad's house. Yeah. I'm like, dad, what the heck? <laughs> like what's going on? Like, yeah. why haven't I been able to order a soda at Chipotle for the past 10 years? Cause it's too expensive. Yeah. But yet you're running this multi billion dollar fund. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Excuse me, I'm yelling. You're it gets, gets my I'm, voice dude, again. Get, dude, this is awesome. And um, anyways, long story short, uh -huh. my dad sits me down and starts to teach me about funds. And every Sunday night, I'd come over on the whiteboard and he'd teach yeah. me about general partners and limited partnerships and how to raise capital, how to mm. uh, aggregate capital and SEC filings and compliance. Right, and yeah. anyways, um, I'm, I'm 22 years old at the time. I'm at BYU at mm. college and I'm trying to figure this out. And it's funny, you know this, but when you start to learn something, you start to see that thing in your life. Yes. Right. Once you, once you put that focus to everything, you start to see it happen more, you know, prevalently in any aspect of your life. Right. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. So I started learning about funds and I was at, I was actually, so I'm in college, I'm working another company, a job to earn money. And uh, you can tell, you know, my dad doesn't, you know, yeah, just, right. I'm working through college. Dude, I'm in school. Dad, bro. I know. My and we'll God. talk about him more, yeah. but he's incredible. I, I really respect my dad. And, and I'm at this company. I'm like, oh, man, we could start a fund in 
this company. We could lend money to some of these clients. Mm. And I had this great idea. I took it to my dad and I'm like, dad, this is awesome. And he's like, this is actually a good idea. And we talked to the owners of the company. They liked it. And we put, we kind of formulated this whole fund. And I was mm. so excited. And um, I hit this point though. I go, shoot. I, I need to raise some money. Like yeah. I, I like the idea, but I'm so like, you've got all the ideas yeah. behind it, but now it's time to actually go talk to the Which people. Which is the yeah. one thing you need for a fund is yeah. investors. <laughs> right. Like that's yeah. the thesis of a fund. And yeah. so I was like, shoot, what am I going to do? Mm. And I had this great idea. I thought, aha, mm. my dad, my dad's rich. He doesn't <laughs> spend his money. He obviously likes to invest. Yeah. He would, I'm his son. He would love to invest with yeah. me. Right. So it's a late Sunday night. Yeah. I'm like, I'm gonna go pitch my dad. And so I walk into his home office, kind of just like this. I sit across yeah. from him. And I, in my best pitch voice possible, I go, dad, how would you like to be our first investor into our fund? <laughs> you know, and I kind of put my hand out like that yeah. too, you know, the whole thing, like how you want to come, you, you know, I come in it. with us. I can see it. And, uh, he kind of laughs and he mm -hmm. goes, Bridger, he goes, your first investor is your hardest investor to find. Mm. He goes, if I invest in your fund, it'll be a crutch that you'll never be able to recover from. Mm. You need to go learn this on your own, dude. And he said, no, your dad's a stud. I, I love this. I know. Isn't yeah. It? yeah. It's not awesome. And, yeah. and, uh, he says no though. And I walked out with my tail between my legs a little bit and I was mm. like, oh shoot, like my dad doesn't even believe in me, you know, yeah, whatever. Right. And, and anyways, I left and I, I said, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to mm. take him up on the challenge. And, um, long story short, I, I spent the next six weeks. I pitched everybody I knew yeah. and I raised, I was talking to former bosses, college professors, friends, like whoever, right? right? I raised a whopping $49,500, nice. which if you know anything about funds is teeny, right. like that's yeah. nothing. Right. But it was enough to get started. I was mm. stoked. I mean, we were doing these loans. The, the idea for the fund was loans that were $2,000 to like $5,000 a loan. Mm -hmm. So we didn't need a lot of capital to start. Yeah, right. Like, let's do it. I'm 22. This is awesome. So I started this little fund, this little micro fund, and we launched it. And our first group of investors, we got them a 64% return on their money, <laughs> which was yeah. awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Small amount of money, yeah. but good returns, right? right? And we were like, this is amazing. So then we then we said, let's actually do this legit. Yeah. And so we went and launched a full out, uh, full out fund and, and we raised and deployed millions of dollars out of that fund. We ran that for about three years. Mm. Um, had a bunch of employees. It was really fun. We just sold that earlier this year mm. um, to a competitor, came and bought us out. So we had a nice exit on that. And mm. then um, right now we've uh, launched you know, we have two more funds coming right. out. These, yeah. this, I mentioned at the beginning the crypto fund, the real estate fund. Yeah, huge stuff. And then um, along the way, that's where we started investment fund secrets. So we had a lot of people asking myself, mm -hmm. my dad, and then I didn't mention my brother. So mm -hmm. my brother is a securities attorney. He does, really? he does law for funds. He's actually right now at the largest law firm in the world for investment funds. They charge clients over 2 billion a year What in fees. They're $2,000 an hour. Anyways, he's there right now. Oh, okay. He was formerly at a $700 million fund. Anyways. Why and uh, so we sit down at dinner at Sunday. We yeah. talk funds yeah. and it's, I understand it's unique, right? Like this yeah, is what we, very. we talk about <laughs> negative interest rates and world economics yeah, right. and you know, yeah. that's what we, and my wife hates it, but um, yeah. that's what, you know, and so we, we said, you know what? Screw it. Like none of us went to Harvard. None of us did this Ivy league route. We just yeah. are entrepreneurs that figure this thing out. And right. so why? don't we help more people figure this out? And there's yeah. no content online. No one talks about this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no one teaches this. Very unique. Yes. And so we started this invest fund secrets just as a simple like YouTube channel. Yeah. And now it's grown into, you know, 4,000 students. We have a coaching programs. We do live events. Like, I mean, we just, just, to, and the goal is really to just help more people understand yeah, right. this game of funds. So mm -hmm. anyways, that's kind of the long story, wow. but yeah, it's been a fun journey. Dude, there's so much to unpack there. Yeah. <laughs> so number one, what a stud your dad is. Oh, because like, dude, yeah. seriously, like, I don't know if you know anything about my story, but I would not be here without my dad. Mm -hmm. Like, and like, that, and like, when it comes to like, you know, believing yourself and having confidence, it's almost something you should never say. It's like, I would not be here if it weren't for somebody. But if it weren't for my dad, I wouldn't be here because of the way he pushed me into things. It sounds like your dad was damn near the same. Like, mm -hmm. he pushed your ass, yeah, right? 100%. He, dude, like, managing an $8 billion fund, but he still made you like work your ass off, put, put it in. Dude, that's what it's all fucking about, man, mm -hmm. when it comes to kids. So, number one, like, your dad's a stud for doing oh, that, yeah. right? Because, and like, dude. And still to this day, yeah. he has not invested in anything. Good. I'm, this is four or five years later. <laughs> yeah. Still, I pitched him last month. I'm like, dad, we got this great, there was an apartment deal we're yeah. going to do. And we had these guys coming. I'm like, there's yeah. obvious arbitrage. Right. I just don't have $4 million to put right. into this. Yeah. Do you want to do it? It doesn't yeah. fit our fund. Right. And he's like, nah, I'm good. Dude, but like, that, so <laughs> that, that's what, I was just thinking about this on the way home. Like, that's kind of the job of a father is to force his son into the fire to let him grow mm. to be a man, right? Mm, yeah. That's like, what, like, and that's, look at what you've become because of it, right? Yeah. 
Do you think you would have become this this successful and had this kind of drive had he like you know given you stuff along the way and made your life easier? Hundred percent. No, yeah. There's no, no, no way. way. No way. Yeah. Right. Be, and but in in, in in retrospect, he's made you push through things. You have pushed through things. You've built something incredible. And you did it on your own, mm-hmm. right? You pushed through the fire, and he kind of low-key forced you to do that by pulling away, right? 100%. What a badass. Oh, right? I love it. And then <laughs> I think it builds, it's given me so much confidence, of too. Of course. Because I think you see a lot of these, I have friends that are this way that had really rich parents, yeah. and they, they, even though they have success in life, yeah. there's no confidence behind that success because it was kind of fabricated a little bit from yeah. their parents. Yeah. And so they feel sheepish, and yeah. I I have all the confidence in the world because I'm right. like, no, I did that. Yeah, yeah, I had a great mentor. Right. And, but like we did that and we launched this other mm-hmm. business that's, you know, multi seven figure business. The yeah. other thing that we did, and it's just, it just, that's what builds confidence. That's right. Yeah. Uh, dude, I, I completely agree. Well, let me, let me pivot. Let me pivot to this right here. Yeah. Mentors. Yeah. Dude. At, like uh, again, dude, like I'm living, I'm listening to your story and I'm like, bro, this is exactly like almost, almost step by step of how I, I, I came into this position. I wanted to do something like important. I wanted to actually be an entrepreneur. I wanted to build something. So the first thing I did is I went and got mentors. Mm. But you were in college at the same time yeah. as you were getting this mentor. So I'm really curious to hear your thoughts on the difference between you having a mentor and being in college. What like t- what do you think about that? Well, yeah, and, and that's we yeah, I, I 100% I believe in mentors. Yeah. I actively pay for coaching. I spend six figures a year same. on I'm sure you're the same. Yeah. I don't think I'll ever stop. I don't think I will. It's like it, and it's and it's like you people listen like, "Oh, how could you ever? That's such a waste of money." Yeah. And every year I look at my I'm like, "We we probably 4 or 5 x mm-hmm. our return on investment." Yes. On that, yeah. I probably should do it again yeah. for next year. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. Every time I put money into a course or coaching program, mm-hmm. I you know, four or five, 10 X my money. And, um, it was in, so in college, I obviously had my dad as a mentor. Right. I actually, I remember I, I joined a, me and my business partner that would launch the best fun secrets with me. Mm-hmm. We went to a group, um, went to an event in Boise, Idaho. <laughs> this guy got on stage, Steve Larson. Oh, okay. You know, Steve Larson. Yeah. Anyways, I'm, yeah, I'll, I'll say who it is. It was yeah. awesome. And we yeah. were there and he pitches this program for 15 grand and I'm like, shoot. Yeah. And me and Mason are sitting there like, crap, like, yeah. what should we do? And I've already, right. I was already running my fund at this time, but like uh-huh. we kept most of the money in the business and we weren't taking distributions. And, and I was like, should we buy it? Anyways, we put on a credit card. Yeah. We put on a credit <laughs> card. We did like yes. a 10 pay. Yes. It was like two grand down today. And then like a thousand a month for yeah. like whatever, 10 months, right. or 12 months. And I was like, okay, yeah. 15 grand, let's do this. And yeah. what happened? And I think this is the, one of the biggest things for pay to play mentorship. Yes. And that's, you know, this by people that pay for your time. Right. When someone pays for my time, mm-hmm. they get stuff done. They get it done. Yeah. When somebody gets a free mm-hmm. coaching call with me, which I'm happy to do friends, family, right. whoever I hop on all the time with people, yeah. they never do anything. Right. People who pay, pay attention. And so for us, That's great. <laughs> we had a great, you know, we had great ideas. We wanted to launch this company called Investment Fund Secrets. We yeah. never did it. And then all of a sudden we had 15 grand or we had our freaking feet to the fire. Yes. We had this bill coming like, mm-hmm. shoot. Mm-hmm. And guess what happened? All magically, all of a sudden, yeah. our business was launched. We hit, you know, we hit a seven figure mark in seven yeah. months. Dude. And it was like, yeah. congrats. Bro. And it was like, you know, what happened? What was the yeah. difference? Yes, we got some great coaching, 100%. Mm-hmm. Like that was great. But also right. it was the, momentum mm. of like, shoot, yes, we're in now. And I think a lot of people when they're starting a business, mm-hmm. yeah, I call, I don't know what you want to call it, but like everyone gets on a zoom call mm-hmm. and you're like, Oh yeah, let's do this business. It yeah, sounds great. Right. Yeah. And then everyone leaves and no one does anything. Right. And then two weeks later, okay, let's get back on. Yeah. Okay. Uh, here we go. Um, Jeremiah, can you do this? Bridger will do this. Yeah. Two weeks later, it's all oh, sorry. My kid had a birthday and yeah. Christmas and right. whatever. And, uh, the moment though you get mm-hmm. momentum and you yeah. can do momentum a lot of ways, but yeah. I'm a big believer in momentum buying a course or yes. putting money down is a big momentum shift. Yes. Another one is getting your first dollars in the door. Yeah. I always love businesses to get dollars in quickly anyways. Yeah. But yeah, I'm a, I, yeah. Anyways, that's a long answer to no, a no, men- no. mentorship well, question, dude, but I'm sure you got similar thoughts. Well, dude, like what you just, it's the pressure. Yeah. Right. Like when you put like, like when you, when you work out, when you go work out and you you're exercising, you put yourself under pressure to grow. Meaning you are literally forcing your muscles to tear, naturally putting yourself through pain in order to grow. Right. There's no fucking difference between that and an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. If you want to grow your business, if you want to grow as an entrepreneur, you have to put yourself through some pressure. Mm -hmm. You have to mount that pressure on your own shoulders. Your father did that to you. My father did that to me. They put pressure on us that it's on you right? It's on you and nobody else. And you lived up to that pressure. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is when, when human beings feel pressure, you either crumble under the pressure or you rise to the occasion. One or the other, you either go the distance or you fail, fall flat on your face, right? It's one or the other. And once you put that pressure on yourself, it's good to feel that anxiety. It's good to have that every single day you wake up saying, 
oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah. If I do not do yeah. this, I will not pay that bill, and we are screwed. Yeah. Especially if you have a family, wife, kids. It gets even more because the pressure keeps mounting the more and more you do. This is what people don't understand. Yep. It, the start is just the start. The pressure that I felt there at the start is nothing compared to the pressure that I feel every time I scale up because the pressure then of putting 15 grand on a credit card is one thing. Then there's the paying six figures to put on an event you hope people will show up yeah, for, right? Yeah. Then it's paying six figures yeah. for mentorship and you're like, I have to make what they're teaching me work, right? Yep. It's investing in those courses. And that's why I actually love courses. Mm -hmm. I've heard a lot of people, especially on social media, shitting on courses. Like, I'm not going to buy your course. You're just another guy selling course. <laughs> like, number one, you have no fucking idea how powerful a course is. 100%. Oh, yeah. I am here today because yeah. of courses. Me too. I'm the same. I'm proud right? of courses. 100%. I love courses. Oh, yeah. The, one of the biggest reasons I love courses is because I skip the learning curve. Yep. Like this guy's already gone through the learning curve. I can now speed up the time frame. This is why you've created a multi-million dollar business at the age of 26 because you skip the learning curve and learn from other people. That's why mentors are so powerful. That's why I hate college. Oh, yeah. Because yep. college yep. doesn't do shit You're for you. You're my language. Dude. <laughs> this is, you pay for short. Shortcuts, That's dude. right. When you I'm, pay. You pay for shortcuts. You 100%. do. Yeah. You either pay to play or you're gonna fucking die, yeah. right? Yep. And dude, at the end of the day, when it comes to college, when I dropped out of college because I got cut from the football team, so I was mm. done with college after that. I looked at it and said, I still have like sixty grand to pay left in college. Mm. I'm like, I'm gonna take that same sixty grand, and I'm gonna spend on the Jeremiah University. Mm, smart. Yeah. And you know what? A lot of that was credit cards. Yeah. People look, would probably look at me like, you're a fucking idiot. Mm -hmm. You got how much in credit card debt? You took out how much loans? I'm like, yeah, but that's just a loan. It's not a student loan. It's the same fucking thing, bro. Yeah. Yep. Like, it's the same thing. Yep. I'm working my ass off to pay it off either way. Yep. It's just this one is millionaire mentors. Those ones are fucking professors giving me quizzes. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's funny that they, they, like our society doesn't doesn't oh, reward that, right? No. Doesn't think it's a, a good thing. They would, right. they would say, oh, Jeremiah, you're an idiot, right? right. Why would you ever do that? But <laughs> go to go to Wharton and spend $200,000 a year. Oh, right? that's such a good idea. Yeah. yeah, no, but dude, like, and that's why I asked you about the college versus mentors thing because yep. I'm so intrigued that you- I'm a dropout. Good. I dropped out, yeah. I think that's such a flex nowadays. It kind of is. It and is. I, and I almost <laughs> don't want it as a flex, but it kind of is. It like, is, And yeah. I don't tell people that about right. people, but like, anyways, it is. Do I talk to mentors and they're like, or people, they're like, oh, I'm a high school dropout. I'm like, dang, that's cool. <laughs> you know, like, you did this, you dropped out of high school? Man, I dropped out of college. You I know? met a kid that was a high school dropout the other day and I was like, I was like, okay, that's a little much for it, me. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> I'm like, high school is pretty fun. I loved, I loved high school. It yeah, was a great time. Right. I had a really, you know. No, I, dude, I get it. But like being a college dropout, like everyone has a fucking college degree these days. You can get that shit online, bro. You know, but no one yeah. has a degree of results yeah. of what you've actually created, right? Yeah. So, okay, take me through this, right? So you're in college. You start this fund, yeah. right? It's your first fund. Now you've launched, uh, you know, not only some uh, a couple more incredible, you know, multiple million dollar funds, but you've also launched this Investor Secrets. What the hell is that? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Investor yeah. Fund Secrets, right? Investment Fund Secrets. Investment yeah. Fund Secrets. That, yeah. What is that? Yeah. So, so that, <laughs> yeah, that is, I, I mentioned it before, but essentially a lot of, you know, I understand the uniqueness of my position. I get it. I had a great dad who's a mentor. Sure. Yeah. I, had a, I have a great brother who's a mentor, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, obviously that gives you some shortcuts in right. life. Yeah. And uh, I said, you know what? Let's democratize this. Mm. Let's give all these other people the same access I had. And I don't, I don't profess to be the smartest guy ever in funds. Funds are very sophisticated. Right. Yeah. So I said, hey, what if I brought together some great mentors, mm -hmm. namely my dad and my brother at the beginning, and then myself, and because I've run a few funds, you yeah, know, right. and uh, and that's kind of how we started it. And it was like, let's just see if this works. And we yeah. we did some research. There was no content online for this. No, dude, I'm, I'm about to say, I don't think I know anyone else doing what you're doing. No, it's still there's nobody. Yeah, there right. is literally nobody. It's a total blue ocean. And we we're like, let's just try this out. So anyone and, watching this, don't get any bright ideas. No, just yeah, yeah, no, go for it. I <laughs> yeah. tell I'm like, yeah, go it's, for it. Yeah. Because it's it, well, it's it's hard to duplicate too. Yes. I have a pretty unique story. Yes. And so, um, anyways, that's that's where the thesis came from. We we're like, let's mm. start with you know, let's start with a, a podcast. So we just started a few podcasts up. So we want to test the market. Yeah. And by the way, I don't know this, I, we can dive more into the story, but go for it. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't want a lot of people when they start a business, maybe, I don't know other, you might have a different opinion, but uh -huh. a lot of people put it on their like personal social media. Mm. Like, and it's just like, they got like, you know, 600 friends on Facebook and right, they're like, yeah. Hey friends, I'm launching a business about investment funds. Yeah. Do you guys support me? Yeah. And of course, like your friends, especially in our community, like a lot of people yeah. are like, yeah, cool. That go sounds awesome. It. That yeah. sounds amazing. <laughs> and I was like, that doesn't give you any feedback. Right, no. Those aren't my target customers. Right. They don't care at all. They're just going to be nice regardless. And even if I, even if they buy just out of pity, yeah. that's not sustainable. So I launched a separate Instagram account mm. 
for, I called it a Binsta. <laughs> my business Instagram, I launched yeah. a separate podcast. I kept everything separate because I wanted yeah. to see if my dream customers mm -hmm. would be attracted to my message mm -hmm. and my core offer. Yeah. And I was like, let's, let's just try this out. So we started a little podcast and, um, and we said, I love, uh, I love getting the first dollars in quickly. Yeah. Some people said, and I actually started a, a <coughs> excuse me, You're good. another, um, course mm -hmm. previously this is years before one of my mm -hmm. six business tries right we uh, i found two mentors we we're gonna do this flipping course we spent a year right. putting this thing together i was kind of just the back end they were yeah. the face of it mm -hmm. we spent a year building it and filming it mm -hmm. we launched it and it was kind of crickets yeah we spent like 15 grand in ad spend mm -hmm. we made back like eight grand mm -hmm. which in course world is Not just bad. terrible yeah. like well. you know what i mean usually courses you're trying to get like a 3x 4x 5x right. you know and i was like shoot this sucks yeah and i was like okay i'm not doing that again it was a year mm -hmm. waste all that kind of stuff so i said all right let's test this thing out mm -hmm. we're gonna do it i had a great a mentor tell me he's like bridger give yourself a timeline and a budget so i said we got three weeks and 500 bucks that's what we'll see what we can do we literally launched uh two funnels we built front end funnels and uh we had a sales video a checkout yeah. page no product we didn't build any products we mm -hmm. built 10 ads i filmed them on my iphone really and we said we got 500 dollars of ad spend mm -hmm. we want to see if we get clicks if people just resonate with the message mm. That was it. That's all we wanted to test with 500 bucks. And we had a checkout page for a $47 product. Yeah. It was going to be what we call the mini, a little mini vault, mini course kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, right. Our first weekend, we launched this thing. We got, uh, we made $1,800 the first weekend. We were like, shoot. And by, and when somebody bought, we'd send them an email right away. Yeah. Hey, the course isn't built. If you want a refund, take your money back. It's fine. But if you want to wait, we're going to build this thing in about this three or four weeks. The $47 one, $47, right? yeah. Wow. And, uh, of the, I think we had the first group, only like two people refund, which was fine. We said, yeah, it's fine. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're, who cares? Yeah. We just wanted to test. And we had all these ideas. Do people want to learn about real estate funds or crypto funds or whatever? Mm. And we nailed down a core message that uh, just by data yeah. and we're like, cool. And we, and uh, what happened all of a sudden was you had momentum. Yeah. We had $800 and we were like, shoot, mm. people like this. Yeah. Like, I wonder if we reinvested this, right? Mm -hmm. So we put it back in, we put it back in the next month. We spent, uh, $80,000 in ad spend. And we literally made back 79,500, like literally break even, <laughs> yeah. a break even funnel. And we had right. no following, no list, nothing. Yeah. And, um, we were stoked. Yeah. And during that time we, we went and filmed, um, we went to a Parker Wallback. I mentioned it earlier. Really went to his little mm -hmm. studio. We filmed like a studio like this. Yeah. I filmed for four days straight. We put all of our content out. We made like 15 videos. Dude, I've been, those, those days are, but for people to understand, those days are long. It's man. a long those, day. It's long oh, days yeah. of filming. And then you come back the next day and you're filming like, I've been there. and we're, we're editing, <laughs> me and my wife are, and I know Premiere oh, Pro a God. decent yeah. amount. I'm like, yeah. we're cutting and splicing right. at yeah. midnight. We're waking up to export crap. Anyways, we put it out and then what we did was we built the product with the customers. Yeah. And so and we said, what more do you guys want? What are you expecting? All that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. And anyways, you might say, well, that's a loss. Like you guys lost, you know, we broke even, Yeah. but we built a huge list mm -hmm. and we had a thousand buyers mm -hmm. and we were like, dang, like this is our audience. Mm -hmm. And we kept asking, what do you guys want? What do you guys want? They said, well, we want more. We want more mentors, all that stuff. So we said, let's put together a mastermind program. So mm -hmm. we said, let's put it together like an actual course. And yeah. so we brought together, I think seven or eight mentors. Um, I did interview style with them or we did different content creation. Mm -hmm. We made about 78 videos. Mm -hmm. We made downloadable PDFs and we teased everybody. This mastermind course was launching soon. And anyways, we followed uh, the Jeff Walker's launch formula, which is, mm -hmm. you know, you launch on a, in his example, launch on it. You tease it for two weeks, launch on a Thursday, open it for Friday, Saturday, close the cart Sunday, the true launch sequence. <laughs> yeah, right. And uh, we launched it. And our first weekend, we made $147,000. Wow. All, all profit. Yeah. Because it was just our little list that we had built. Yeah, right. And we were yeah. like, shoot, now we've got some money to be dangerous with. Mm. And we said, okay, let's take all that money and let's reinvest it and grow and scale. And we did, we did live webinars for 39 weeks in a row. Every Thursday, we do a live webinar. Yeah. We open the cart Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We close the cart on Sunday mm -hmm. and we restart the next week marketing. Yeah. The Russell, classic Russell Brunson model. Classic, yeah. I'm and just listening again, to this. I'm like, I'm thinking, back to mentors. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm not going to reinvent the wheel. Right. These guys have proven it. Russell Brunson tells me to do a webinar every week. Right. Cool. Yeah. I'll do it. Like, right. I don't, I'm not going to try to like, we have so many people. You probably have the same thing. They come into your, yeah. <laughs> your little program, your little system. I'm like, Jeremiah, you're great, yeah. but I'm going to tweak it and make my own thing. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, you can go for it. Yeah. Go for it. Right. But like, We've had thousands of clients and this mm. is like the best system. Yeah. Anyway, so I said, we're not going to reinvent the wheel. That's anyways, right. that's how we launched it. Now we have a higher ticket, like one-on-one -on -one coaching stuff. Right. We do events and all that stuff. So anyways. Dude, it's funny because you're talking about click funnels and I've, I, there's, especially when it comes to like, you know, like being in the click funnels community. And I know you've been, you know, you're establishing your name in the click funnels community and what you've done. Right. And there's so many people out there who dream of having their course and dream of having their program. And they don't even just 
they, they, dude, they don't even get started. Oh yeah. Like I'm yep. listening, I'm listening to you and I'm just thinking back to when, like we were launching our funnels. And I'm just thinking of those days where of filming, editing, uploading and testing and it fails and it fails and just trying over and over again. And I see these other people where they just say, Oh, we tried this one funnel. didn't work. Yeah. I'm like, Okay. Me too. And like, yeah, yeah. where's the rest of it? You yeah. know, like keep going, bro. Yeah. Like, dude, like that, 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 and then they try to reinvent the wheel. It's like, they read these things from Russell Brunson and he's ultra sexual. You see all the success coming from ClickFunnels and oh, what yeah. we like, I didn't invent, I'm just like, I'm dumb. Russell's smart. I'm going to do <laughs> yeah. what he says, you know? Yeah, exactly. So shout out to Russell Brunson. But man, like, I'm like, why don't I just do that? You dude, know, like, oh. <laughs> dude, so I've, I've had, I'm sure you have the same thing. I've heard yeah. we had six to 10 friends over the last year, mm-hmm. counting Bridger. I want to do a course on X, Y, and Z. Can you teach me? And I, I say, dude, I love you to death. I love yeah, course. Let's right. do it. Yeah. And I sit down on a call or we mm. zoom, whatever. And I'm right. like, let's map it out. We do the whole thing. Yeah. And um, I don't think a single one is launched. <laughs> and um, yeah. which is, oh, if they're listening to this, go launch. Go you know what launch I mean? it, please. But I, yeah. I was at that Steve Larson event. I'm going to back to Steve. And I, I, by the way, I don't mind citing people. A lot of people on like podcasts are like, I had this one mentor, but they keep it secret. Why not? I, I anyway, Steve Larson, where yeah, I'm at his event. Shout bro. him out. Shout out to Steve. And he does this and he gets everyone riled up. He's like, who wants to run a course? Who wants to be like an influencer yeah. like Jeremiah? You know, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, and everyone's like, yeah, like, right. yeah, yeah. And he's like, say yes, you know, do the whole thing, right? Yeah. And he goes, you guys want it? You guys really want this? We're like, yes, we want this. Mm. Are you willing to do whatever it takes? Yeah, we're willing to do whatever it takes. He goes, cool. We've got a 10 minute break right now. I want you to take out your phone and go live on Facebook and tell everybody what you're doing. Ooh, I and the like whole that. the whole room just went silent. You just feel, oh, dude, it I was love like, that. Hear, and it was like, shoot, <laughs> yeah. And he's like, well, what just happened? He's like, I thought yeah. you guys you were gonna yeah. do anything, right? Yeah. I, thought, I thought you were you were you were this was your uh-huh. dream, yeah. And I'm asking you to pull out your phone and right now mm. go live. Yeah, are you willing to do what it takes? Yeah. And it was like, oh. <laughs> and I remember me. Yeah, I was like, you know what. And I went over to this little corner of the room yeah. and I was like, it took me like five minutes to get prepped up yes. and I flipped on my live and I yeah. was like, Hey everybody, yeah. you know, all awkward. <laughs> I was like, dude, uh, hello, I'm Bridger. Yeah. And uh, I think I'm going to do this thing. Yeah. And, and I turned it off and I was like, that was, you know, hard. And I, and it gave me an appreciation yeah. at the beginning of, I'm like these people that a lot of people mm-hmm. criticize influencer people or people that right. are online. Yeah. And man, I, at that moment I was like, shoot. It's, yeah. it's hard to put yourself out there like yes. that. Yes. And I think a lot of people in that room had that same, uh, you know, a realization. Right. And, um, and I've asked those say that same mm-hmm. seven to 10 friends. Yeah. I've, I've told, I, I say, guys, I give them the same challenge. I go, go yeah. live today. Yeah. If you really believe in it, go live today. Yeah. And none of them have done it. Yep. And I, it's, that's, it's, it's talking about starting. Yeah. You have no excuse. Dude, you can plan all you want, bro. Like no until excuse. you put it out there, take accountability. And dude, what you just said is like, like that, that pressure. Yeah. The pressure. It com- yeah. It, it comes you, yeah. back yeah. to putting yourself under pressure, right? Literally forcing yourself to do something that's so scary, so uncomfortable. Dude, like I know because when he says, I'm like, I'm just thinking like, I remember putting it out there and I remember how scared I was. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah. Seriously. But then I remember like walking myself through mentally of why did I feel this? Why am I feeling this way? And it always came down to, do you believe in yourself or do you not believe in yourself? Yes. People might say something and they might not. Who gives a fuck? Yeah. Like straight up, who gives a shit what they're going to say? That the thing is, how many people just hold back just because they won't do it? They're so scared of what could happen, what could not happen. That's the only thing that keeps people away is the fear of the pressure they're putting themselves under, that fear of failure that comes. And do without, like, I say this all the time there's only two things that you need to be successful. Seriously, there, and, and that is, I hate when people say that, by the way, so I almost hate saying that. Yeah, yeah. But at the end of the day, I really could stem it down to these two things. Act, odd in third, actually, because <laughs> right. this one was someone, number one is confidence. Yeah. Mm. If you believe in yourself more than anybody else, if you have the self, enough self-belief to put yourself out there where people can throw rocks at you, to stand up and say, I'm going to do this and put yourself out for the world to see, for them to criticize or like, and you don't know what it is, if you have that kind of confidence, nothing will stop you. We have a phrase in capital raising, money loves confidence. Uh, yeah, Money it, loves confidence. It, it's 100% true. Dude, it, it just, it, you're, they're drawn to confidence, yeah. right? You have to infuse yourself with what I call supreme confidence. Number two is courage right? 
without fear, there cannot be courage. Meaning in order to have courage, you have to put yourself Mm -hmm. in a fearful situation in order to do what you need to do. You have to experience fear. You have to put like, when it's come to weightlifting, you have to throw yourself under that squat rack because that shit's kind of scary. What if your knee gives out and you got 300 or 400 or I don't know, you probably squat 600 pounds. Yeah, right. (laughs) And that shit comes down. It gets a little scary, right? Or if it comes to entrepreneurship, putting yourself out there, actually building something, actually putting your money at risk, going into debt to start something, right? It takes so much courage to do that. And the third one I add is coachability. Mm, because smart. if you're not willing to be coachable, you ain't going nowhere. Mm. You're not going nowhere if you don't, you're not willing to learn from other people. Yep. I don't care how smart you are. Yep. There's other people who are smarter. And as long as you realize that, you're you're unstoppable. You can learn and absorb from everybody else. You have the confidence to put yourself out there. You have the courage to push through this pressure and fear. What can't you do? Yeah. You'll learn it. You'll push through. You'll grow. At the end of the day, that is really what entrepreneurship is about. That's why I look at what you've done. And that's why I love asking people about their story. I love asking you about your story because, like, I read this off, right? And you've got over 4,000 students. You've done millions of dollars in funds, helped other students with $900 million funds, right? Massive. But what it all stems back to is those decisions that you made in the dark where no one else was around, no one knew who you were at the time, or maybe they knew who you were and they might even you know, criticize you for doing it and say, who do you think you are for doing that, yeah. right? And the, the those times where you're editing, you're filming, it sucks. But that takes so much courage and confidence that I see in you that you've had to do, and I hope everyone else watches this sees that, what you've had to do in order to get where you are. It's not a small it, yeah. thing, bro. And it's incredible to see. And that's why, dude, like, I love your story, you know? Mm-hmm. It, this is like, p- people, if they could just realize that pressure that you've put yourself under is exactly what they have to do. Mm. That pressure is what builds diamonds, man. Right? Yeah. Well, I, dude, I love what you said. <laughs> and it sounds cheesy. Like yeah. you said, this sounds so cheesy. Of course it does. And I used to say that all the time. I listen to stuff like, that sounds cheesy. And yeah. I, now that you're saying that, like, that's 100% true. Yes. I can act like the, the, and especially, and I'll talk about the courage you said yeah. in number two. We live in a time though mm-hmm. where the courage piece, you don't even need yeah. <laughs> like, it's more of courage of believing yourself back to yes, confidence. Yes, absolutely. It's not like fear of, Oh my gosh, I got to spend $300,000 to start a business. Yeah. It's like, no, we start our business for $500. Yeah. You can start businesses for, there is the, the roadblocks yeah. blocks to start a business right now mm-hmm. are getting less and less and almost nothing. There's you have really no excuses. You have point. no excuses. Yeah. <laughs> like 600 years ago, you had to be born in the right family, yeah. be on a, a Lord or a lady, you know, in the right area. Right? If yeah. you wanted to own something, mm-hmm. whatever today you need a freaking iPhone <laughs> <laughs> and, and those three things you just talked about, yep. right? Like it's, it's not like other things, you know yeah. what I mean? And so I, I, I just, I love what you said. Like dude, it's, it's so easy right now. There's no excuse. Is. There's yes. no excuse. And dude, and you know, it's funny. Cause you talk about like economics and stuff with your family. Like that's very much my, like, we love to talk about politics. We love to talk about economics. What's happening in this country. What's happening in the world. What do you, and I love those deep conversations. Mm. Those are my favorite. Right. And what I feel like is happening in this country is I feel like the W2 job, the getting paid hourly is dying. Hundred percent. I yeah. think I think that's going to become a thing of the past, either because it's going to be replaced by technology, because hourly pay workers. What what is happening with like Amazon? What's happening with these big corporations, Walmart, and all them? They're so sick and tired of constantly hiring and firing these these you know hourly workers because they're the ones who are constantly bouncing around. Right? Yep. They haven't really established themselves. And honestly, why should they? They're getting paid hourly. Mm-hmm. Like they're not invested into what it is. Right? Yep. And so these companies are investing a lot of money into replacing that. Amazon's uh, you know investing a lot of money into replacing. Workers at at uh, warehouses, yeah, where these robots can literally, you know, do all that. I don't know if you've seen these videos. Oh yeah, they're crazy. It's insane, yeah. right? At Walmart, I don't know if you walked into some WalMarts now. Some are getting more developed uh, than others, obviously, because you know they don't all happen at once. Some WalMarts, you can barely find a checkout line with a person there. It's almost yeah. all self checkout yeah, yeah. now, we're right? That. Yep. And so we're moving into this thing where where, where what people have to realize is the W two job or that hourly paid job is going to die. Mm-hmm. And it, you, what you're going to get paid for is your skill set, who you are as a person of value you provide to this world. I say this over and over, the world will pay you what it thinks you're worth, right? And if you develop skill sets, you'll be worth a lot. But in regards to what you're talking about with yeah. economics, what do you well, see happening in yeah, this country? Yeah, I want to add, I, the, uh, I saw a stat, it's either one in three or one in four Americans have a side, a side gig. Right. 
which is it's kind of become this they call it the gig economy. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's doing Lyft or uh, Uber or whatever. Their their side their side right. hustle is flipping cards or yep. doing the Gary V style, going to garage sales, finding junk, flipping it on Facebook. I, we yeah, can go oh, on yeah, and on. on and on. Right? There's so many. There's so many things. Which I was just, and they call it the mass this labor shortage of the exit. Everyone's leaving their jobs yeah. for these things. Which I actually there's a few reasons I'll talk about. But yeah, you I'm mentioned here. a second ago yeah. automation, right? And that's why yes. companies are investing a lot in automation. Right. Number two though, uh, you have inflation. I yes. mean, you're in being inflated, mm-hmm. 6.8% reported inflation. Yeah, right. I mean, real inflation, we can talk, it's probably 10 to 12% right now. Our country's fucked. The dollar's fucked. Yeah, it is. It yeah. is. And we can talk about more right now. If, Dude, let's do anyways, it. Anyways, all that kind of stuff. Okay. But, <laughs> but as far as employees right now, I think we're moving to this gig economy. That's, well, number one, I think it shows the time and seasons we're in. Yes. We are in a... And I had a, a great economist on my show. He talked about this is one of the the biggest wealth transfers in the history of the world. Amen. Is happening right yes. now. And then secondly, one of the lar- the mm. actually the largest human migration is going on right now. Mm. People are moving from cities to suburbs. Yes. From urban to rural. Yes. This is the largest human migration mm-hmm. in history. Yes. And when the world changes mm-hmm. like that, yeah. there's a lot of money to be made. A lot. And I think a lot of people are looking at this right now and saying, you know what? This is a good time yeah. to leave my job or to go somewhere else. Mm-hmm. And there's this mass labor shortage. I think a lot of companies are facing that right now. They're yeah. trying to hire employees. They either need to raise salaries, mm-hmm. which they're starting to do, yes. catch up with this inflation problem, right. or um, this gig economy goes on, right? Yeah. Or there's a market crash and everyone in the gig economy loses their jobs yes. and says, right. shoot, I need to flee to safety yes. at a safe job, right? right? Yeah. Um, that's kind of the forces I see mm-hmm. hitting right now with our labor economy. But anyways, just a thought there. Well, no, dude, like what you're talking, dude, no, let's dive into that. Thought. Yeah. Because I, I taught, this is what I, so you asked me, it's funny because we haven't really dove into what I talk about with my business. I teach something called the Triforce of Wealth. And this mm-hmm. is what all of my mentors have taught me. Number one thing, every mentor I've ever, you know, flown across the country to invest a ton of fucking money. They all say the same thing when it comes to private equity, basically rounding it down to, start and own and invest in businesses. Mm. That is how the wealthy make their money. That's how the constitution of the United States was written to benefit the business owner and the landowner, right? Mm. So the Triforce of Wealth, what I teach people is number one, businesses. You're going to make money through businesses. You're going to create wealth through businesses. That is how our economy was built. And if you look at the three, what I call three killers of wealth that I've been taught, is this is what will kill your wealth. As long as you can avoid these three things or put your money into things that will actually keep up with it, you're fine. Number one, taxes. Mm. Number two, inflation. Number three, volatility, right? But let's talk about number two, inflation, because to me, taxes is getting crazy as well. But at the the end of the day, if you understand taxes, if anyone in the economy understands taxes, you're never going to be able to tax the rich because they're going to be able to move their money however they want. Taxes is really just a roadmap for where to put your money. It's not a restriction. It's this is where you put your money. And the uh, the rich understand that, right? Mm -hmm. But when it comes to inflation, the biggest and scariest thing about inflation and what's going on in this country is that inflation destroys the middle class. Inflation makes the rich richer yep. and the poor poorer. Yep. And that's why I'm so scared. That's why I what I'm doing with Alpha Influence, I want to help people buy and own businesses. Mm-hmm. I want to help everyone start their business and get on top of this inflation, what's happening in this country. Because if you look at anywhere else in, in the world, look at Mexico, look at Brazil, look at Russia, there's an incredible disparity between the classes. Yeah. You could go to one side of the street and it's poor as dirt. And you go to the other side of the street and it's rich as hell. People don't get it. There's a lot of wealth in Mexico. Yeah. There's a lot of wealth wealth in Brazil, even though we think they're third world, there's a lot of fucking wealth, oh, yeah. but what yep. it is, it's controlled by a very small percentage. Yep. And then you come here to the United States. What made the United States so incredible was the middle class mm-hmm. is that anyone could come here and have the American dream, own a house, work a job. And that that's how it was. You could actually live a really good life and just being a middle-class citizen. Right. Yep. But that is dying. And as a matter of fact, I don't even think it's not, it's dead. I think what we've done to this country, what we've done to the dollar, what's happening with the way we're moving is we're moving in this separation of classes where you're either going to be on one side of the street or the other, you know, push come to shove. And the people who are going to stay on top of this are the business owners. Mm. They're the ones who invest their money into businesses, whether it's private equity, they take a fund, they go buy in businesses and build them up or whatever it is. Right. Those are the people. To your, to your, well, when this started this whole uh-huh. COVID pandemic, right. It's funny. The, uh, I back to that conversation. I was like, you know what? If, if the wealth are going to get wealthier, yeah. I want to make sure I'm on the wealthy side. I got to make sure I'm over there. I got to make sure I'm on yeah. that fence. I don't want to be in the middle somewhere, <laughs> unsure right. what's going to happen. Yes. Like, I want to be for sure on the wealthy you, side. Yes. Whether it's right or long, like me personally, yeah. I'm going to be in this camp, you know? Yeah. So I think that's spot on. Yeah. Um, you know, you mentioned the dollar being dead. I 
you know, there's a lot of different, you know, thoughts and I'll, I'll share a different opinion. I obviously I that, 40% yeah. of us dollars been printed or whatever. And they stopped in the last year, yeah, or last 18 months. We're trying to print another five point something trillion. Yeah, it's, or, yeah. it's crazy. Right. Yeah. And they actually, they don't report the exact number. That's why it's estimated 20 to 45%. We don't know. They right. stopped reporting it. The fed. Yeah. So, um, yeah. anyways, here's a, th- a few thoughts though on the mm-hmm. other side. Cause everyone's like, Oh, the dollar's dead. I'll give yeah. you a few thoughts on the other side. Let's hear it. Um, number one, is the Fed has told us exactly what they're doing. Mm. The Federal Reserve, Jer- right. Jerome Powell. Right. And this is this happened, um, you know, 18 months, two years, three years ago. They said, yeah. guys, we are below, we are living below our means, mm. essentially. Mm-hmm. We are the reserve currency of the world. We are the world's superpower. Mm. If we inflate our dollar mm-hmm. back to a 2% average, which they have been targeting, right everyone gets richer Mm -hmm. because we're in dollars. Yes. Yes. Inflation will hurt you a little bit on your bank account, Mm -hmm. but the last year and a half, most people that we know Mm -hmm. are significantly richer. They're doing a lot better. A lot better. Yes. Everybody's crushing it. It just, despite like, yes, I know some people had hard times, but Mm -hmm. majority of people that I know, and I'm guessing, you know, have crushed it the last 24 months. Right. Which is interesting. Right. And what, um, are the, what, well, what are those people in? If you don't mind me asking, they're all in assets, right? That asset inflation That's has been huge. Key. Right. That's You're investing in yes. assets. Right. So, and the, the U S the fed is saying, well, people that own assets mm-hmm. are going to be, we're going to, we're going to up those assets a little bit compared yep. to other countries. Right? right. So anyways, they've told us what they want to do. Right. Right. That was their plan. So they started this inflation game. Mm-hmm. They called it transitory for a long time. Everyone was like, it's not transfer. And, they, and they admitted that now finally three weeks they ago. Up, yes. It's not transitory. Not transitory. To stay. Which is great. I'm happy. <laughs> they finally admitted it <laughs> and they're actually reporting decent numbers, mm-hmm. you know, 6.8%. I feel like it's a pretty decent number to report. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of economists before that were saying, you know, whatever they report, it's usually yeah, double, right. right? The other, the side of the coin though, and they, they've just, you know, come out last week and said, we're going to taper back next year. We have three rate increases for next year. We want right. to taper back this mm-hmm. inflation. Right. We'll see what they do there. Um, People are always citing the rise of cryptocurrencies. Ray Dalio's new book talks about the rise of China. Mm. Um, oh my the, gosh, we're the, talking about China. Jeez. Yeah, <laughs> here, here's a few things that I think will happen here mm. pretty soon. Let's hear it. I think the Fed coin is coming out very soon. I that's I, so interesting. If I had a yeah. prediction for the next five years, the, like one thing I was going to put money on is the Fed coin or whatever you want to call it, the U.S. dollar coin, yeah. a cryptocurrency mm-hmm. dollar is coming out very soon. I agree. The feds already signal what they're doing. Yeah. Um, and I think that will re- in, in, in reset. reset in a lot of ways, yeah. the dollar. Yeah. Um, secondly, mm-hmm. a, a, a strong point for the dollar. Mm-hmm. We've seen this, uh, Okay, start of COVID. Mm. What happened, right? Everyone's sold. So you had, which is crazy. Bill Ackman is, I don't know if you saw the story, but Bill Ackman's a big hedge fund manager in on Wall Street. He gets yep. on CNBC. This is like, so March. Right. Everyone's starting to get worried, right, about, about uh, COVID. Yeah. He gets on CNBC and he goes, all hell is about to break loose. Mm-hmm. This thing's going to be terrible. It's going to kill everybody. Yeah. And what happened the next morning? Market's down 5%, 10 It takes yeah. that huge plummet, right? right? Yeah. Little did everyone know, Bill Ackman had a short on the entire market. He turned $26 million into $2.5 billion in three weeks. All because of that. Three weeks. He made, talk about market he made two and a half billion Holy dollars, <laughs> which is just crazy, That's right? Stupid. Because it rebounded back yes. and the whole thing, yeah. right? So he crushed it. It was, it was actually pretty crazy as a hedge fund. And he's talking about hedge funds. That's yeah. what hedge fund managers right. do. Um, anyways, what was interesting about that, that V right. that happened I, I held a lot of gold at that time. My dad had a lot of gold, which mm. gold traditionally is an inflationary asset. Right. Like usually you gold use it does well. Against, yes, yes right. it hedges yeah. against a downside. Yeah, exactly. Crypto. Yep. I, I had a bunch it's, of Bitcoin. Right. Let's let's this is gonna hedge. Yeah. Guess what happened? They all went down. Yeah. Gold went down, right. silver went down, yeah. copper went down, right. Bitcoin went down. Yeah, tanked. Guess what? So that what does that tell you? Mm-hmm. What did everyone do in a crisis? They pulled their money. Everyone went to dollars. Yes. Everyone's I want dollars. Well, that's what they're trained to do. And so right. Then you move on. This year we had a, yeah. a crash in July. Guess what everyone did? Yeah. They went to dollars yes. again. Right. They didn't go to gold. They didn't mm-hmm. go to silver. They didn't go to Bitcoin. They went right. to dollars. Two weeks ago, right. we had a big market slide. Yeah. I'm like, okay, my gold's gonna do well. Right. My Bitcoin's gonna do well. Guess what happened? Yeah. They all slid. And guess what? Everyone went back to dollars. Right. US Treasuries went down. Mm-hmm. Everything fell because they went back to dollars. Well, that's that is that is how the markets work. Like the people, when there's fear, when they're scared, they pull their money. Right. But that's also when, once that dip happens, that's when the sharks dive in. That's when the really rich people wait for those moments to dive in because they're moving against the current. Right. When things are high, they're pulling out dollars. When things drop down, they're diving back in. Right. Cause I, I you know, and my lad is right. Yep. When this whole thing happened, one of the things he told me was that he said, this is the moment you dive in while everyone's running. Yep. He says the thing that makes a wealthy wealthy is when everyone runs for the hills, you're dry, you're going in. That's what that's the difference is yep. you're just going against that rate, right? And what you're saying, dude, is so true what you're saying because 
the people who are going to win are going to get more wealthy are the people who own assets, right? Because inflation happens to the people who own assets. That's why the rich get richer. The rich own assets, right? They own the real estate. The guy who sees, you know, $5 a gallon at the gas station, he don't care that much. Why? Because his real estate just went up yeah. 20%. Well, 100%. Yeah. Obviously, the right? assets are great. But what, the point I'm trying to make is yeah. people are still holding on to dollars. They yes, want they dollars. Are. Right. They're not going to the yen. They're not mm -hmm. going to the ruble. Mm -hmm. They're holding on dollars. So back to the point of like the dollar's dead or whatever. Right now, yeah. what what else? It, we're the, yeah. Yes, the US dollar is bad. Yeah. But everyone else is just as bad. Right. You look at Germany, German mark, like, you know what I mean? Oh, you look oh, at yeah. like, it's like we're the tallest midget at the circus <laughs> right now. It's what it is. And so personally, this yeah. is, I mean, this is, I, I think a lot of people are like, let's run from the dollar. But like, yeah. I, I don't see the dollar where, again, is the world superpower. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to use the dollar anymore, I know of uh, two situations that people stopped using the dollar. Um, you had uh, Kadavi. Um, yeah, they and he, st he He's stopped, dead. he yeah. stopped, uh, he didn't want to use the dollar because right. right now you have the Bretton Woods He tried Woods to create his own currency yes. in his, yeah, right. And he somehow got killed by the what U.S. Happened? government. Yeah, something crazy happened. Hey, uh, Joe Biden, can you look into that? No. The other one's, uh, uh, Saddam Hussein. Yeah, that's true. He wanted, People don't know that. He wanted to trade oil mm -hmm. with not using dollars. Yes. And guess what? He somehow got killed as well. Mm -hmm. If you're Turkey and you stop using the dollar, guess what we do? We park an aircraft carrier yeah. outside of Turkey and we say, you can't trade with the rest of the world. Yeah. That's the Bretton Woods agreement right. after World War II. Yeah. So when you're talking about a reserve currency, mm -hmm. I think the dollar is still the reserve. I don't think, you know, the dollar is dead, at least, yeah. at least for the next bit. I agree. Now, Ray it's Dalio's book not. says, you know, you have China, China. a rise of yes, China, right. but China has been manipulating their currency forever. No one wants to invest in Chinese companies because right. they've been fraudulent for years. For years. And they and have so, their hands tied in all of them. And that's, yeah. I mean, Ray Dalio addresses that in his book a little yeah. bit, but I think, I think it's hard for a, a large, I mean, talking huge asset managers mm -hmm. to move to a new currency, at least in yeah. the, in the next decade, I just yeah. don't think happens. See, that's interesting. You're saying that because if you look at if you look at the only the only country out here that could really threaten the dollar is China, like really, there's no oh, yeah, what other country is going to be able to you know like threaten the dollar? It's or, China or a right? Bitcoin, right? Or a Ex cryptocurrency. That's exactly right? that's the next thing I'll say is that's why pe that's why a lot of people actually go to crypto because interesting. You're saying you know the dollar's gonna be good. A lot of people in the crypto space, the reason why they want Bitcoin, the reason why they love crypto is because they feel like the dollar's yeah. dead. So they you they're trying to use Bitcoin kind of like the crypto like the the gold of cryptocurrency, yeah. right? As the way to hedge against the dying dollar, right? And they want this to be their new unregulated, un decentralized way of, you know, actually having funds. Yeah. And which is so interesting, you're talking about the Fed coin. I think the Fed see, I think they see that and they do not want that. So they're going to release their own coin. I think there's a lot of people, especially high up in the crypto space, warning against the Fed coin, right? How would you not? You're the Fed. <laughs> it's too much power to not it's do it. It's too big now. You yeah. can you can tax every transaction. Mm. Everything is public ledger. Oh. You, you know, you pay your hair salon guy, you know, under the table. He right. doesn't pay tax on that. Yeah. Now they're collecting tax on that. Yes. And guess what? The U.S. has already done this. Yeah. So 1933, the U.S. outlawed gold bullion. They outlawed That's right. they, yes. gold. Yeah. You couldn't trade gold anymore. Yes, it was. They said you have to turn in your gold for paper dollars. Yes. They've already done this, yes. right? I, I I see a similar thing happening. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I think it's inevitable. China right now has three cities. They launched their well, coin. China already. They already launched Bitcoin, their coin, right? They outlawed Bitcoin, but they launched their own crypto. There you go. China okay. already has their own uh, digital yuan or yen or whatever yeah, it's called. Right. They have three uh, three cities right now, test pilot cities that are a hundred percent digital. Wow. If you want to pay a beggar on the street, the beggar has a QR code. Oh, you scan it and you pay them the money, You're right? Like it's, it's literally, I had, I had two friends visit these cities. Really? You can't pay for anything. It's all mm. done on your phone, electronically face ID. Right. They have anyways, it's crazy. That's the other, scary. The other side of the coin though, yeah. for a pro for, I'm, I'm a big believer. We're obviously not just a crypto fund. Right. I believe yeah. in the crypto space. Absolutely. Um, the other thing that's huge for crypto, which I think is the coolest thing ever. Mm -hmm. um, right now you have about 2 billion people that are in third world countries that they call the unbankable. You're talking about like El Salvador and all those people. Well, I'm, like, I'm just talking in general, people okay. that don't have uh -huh. access to banks mm. and, and other things. Um, people that are in third world countries, yeah. they have skipped and they, and I was talking to a guy, he's in Silicon Valley. He's like, they will never use credit cards or mm. checks or, and he was saying, I don't know if I believe this desktop computers. They have completely skip that. I'm like, what do you yeah. mean? And he goes, well, cause, cause so Americans, we had checks and then yeah, credit cards right. and now we've got like Venmo and Apple pay. Right. Well, a little, little bit of a digital currency. At yeah. A little yeah. bit kind of, now we're kind of getting into the crypto world a little yes. bit. 
these so right now um elon musk they have starlink their company yes 12, oh my gosh i'm so, so glad you brought have, that up they have they originally filed for twelve thousand satellites now they're going to thirty three thousand satellites they're trying to give high speed internet to the entire globe and what that does <laughs> is it allows these two billion people to now have high speed internet anywhere they are yeah and guess what they're going to use to transact currently if you're mm. in whatever uganda and you want to send money to America, you have to go to Western Union. Yeah. It takes five days. You got to mm-hmm. transact, goes to the Fed, a SWIFT right. account moves mm-hmm. in. Yeah. That's just not, doesn't work. No. They they are, and it was funny, this guy out of Silicon Valley was on my show, and I was, he's like, dude, I've been to these, he has a third world um, ETF that mm-hmm. he runs. He's like, I've been to these countries. They use Apple Pay type of products way more than Silicon Valley does. Wow. They all pay on their phone right now. Everyone's got a smartphone. Yes. Everyone pays on their phone. Everyone transacts on their yes. phone. It's incredible. It goes, yeah. it's more technical. It's, it's almost more advanced than Silicon Valley. Wow. And it was just crazy. Well, dude, what that's you, the future well, right there. Dude, there are more, pe- it said that there are more people who have a smartphone than have running water. You're more likely, yeah. you go into these several countries, they are going to have a, a smartphone yeah. as opposed to having running water. It's crazy, yeah. Everyone has a smartphone, but what, dude, this is, I, I love you diving in this because- and it makes the world flat, is what's so cool. Seriously, and everything's it, connected now. And it brings all these new entrepreneurs. There's yeah. a book called- um, Do you think billion- the world's flat? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, we can actually talk about that. Yeah. Dude, the guys on TikTok are pretty convincing, They are pretty bro. convincing, I've but been, I still can't I've been putting the algorithm or whatever. I, steer, yeah. I see flat earth videos like yeah. every day on TikTok. Yeah. And I'm like, man, these guys, maybe, I don't believe in the concept. Maybe there is an ice wall. But they, <laughs> dude, they, uh, sorry, that's just tangent right now, but <laughs> they talk about um, like exposing NASA. Yeah. Some of those videos are pretty, like they oh, show the, I agree. the yeah. fake NASA videos oh, and they're yeah. not like the old ones. I'm telling you right. like current NASA yeah. videos and it's pretty convincing. It I'll is. tell you yeah, what, yeah. it's a little convincing. I get you. I get yeah, you saying. No, there's a lot of corruption. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. So I don't, I don't doubt it. Bro. Sorry, back when I was saying before, yeah, though, yeah, there's yeah. a book called A Billion Entrepreneurs mm. and it talks about these bil- a billion people really on the planet right now. Yeah. The, the third world countries are the most entrepreneurial countries on the planet. True. Guys that go fish, they have a lobster and they yep. sell it to somebody else. Yeah. And they they're, ca- they're ca- hustling all, always. Yes. You stop your car. You see people everywhere trying to sell shit, right? Yes. Yep. Go, go, we have on. a number of funds in our group that are mm. investing into third world countries. They do microfinance. Mm. And they're, they're saying, he's like, Bridger, you can give a guy that sells lobster a hundred dollars, literally a hundred dollar bill. That will absolutely change his life forever because a hundred dollars, mm. he makes today $3 a day. Yeah. With a hundred dollar investment, he can buy two new nets and a little cage or whatever. The higher some he people goes out, from yeah. three dollars a day to twenty dollars a day. Wow! He can pay your loan back in two months. Yeah, and now he has seven x his mm. income. Mm. Right? It and it's just like there's this startup capital yeah. that right now is this big gap. Yeah, I think Bitcoin and blockchain gives access to those billion entrepreneurs that just need a hundred dollars yeah. a person. Yeah, it's crazy, yeah. dude. I think Elon Musk is going to be the most influential man who ever walked on this planet besides Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's a very, that's a very big statement, but I mean yeah. it because he, what he has, what he has done in regards to like, pay, dude, he PayPal people realize yeah. he was the one who, who like invented PayPal. Yeah. Yep. PayPal is the way we we transact in so many ways on through the internet, right? PayPal is revolutionary. Today. Revolutionary, yeah. right? Yes. Zip. I think he it, wasn't he the one who invented Zip where you could download music. Yep. Downloading music was Elon. People don't get that PayPal Zip, but then we come into Tesla where he acquired that from somebody else. Yep. But now we're like we're looking at the potential of the death of petroleum, right? Yeah. And I got a diesel truck. I'm not happy about it. No, <laughs> yeah, yeah. the death of petroleum, the yep. electric world, right? And then he's taking people's space, but then all of a sudden Starlink. Oh, yeah. And w- w- what the second I heard about Starlink was the most incredible thing. I'm like. That will bring internet to the world. It's crazy. I'm like, yep. I want to buy that because yeah. I can have internet anywhere I go now. Yep. There's no more. And I think at and you know, shit in, a, shit in the bed oh, right yeah. now, yep. right? Yep. But if you look at that, how well that connects with just connecting the world, right? Make completely changing how everything is. I already know people who don't care about where you live. You, It doesn't matter where you live anymore. Yep. You can, a lot of them are down in Tulum, Puerto Rico, yep. or Bali. They're living in Bali, just running their business online, right? So this, this, this world where you you're not landlocked you're talking about the great movement yeah. and it you're, changes real estate right now it changes real estate it totally drastic now right real now, estate yes. in tulum and have these beautiful places are that much more powerful because yep. it doesn't matter where you live you do, like dude do you know how many people are working remotely yep. for these big corporations 
Right, like like we, like office spaces. Yep. It, that we're going through the most incredible change. Do I want to comment about, on that for a second? Go for it. Yeah, so yeah. I, I just read a book. My dad, he's read it twice. Yeah. And he was like, you got to read this book. I'm like, all right, I'll read it. It's called The Future is Faster Than You Think. And uh, these guys, and there's two guys that are in Silicon Valley. They just go through the emerging technologies. And you just mentioned that right there. Right. The remote work, the mass migrations. And then they go through the implications of that. Yeah. Or how real estate changes. But they talk about why is all this happening now? Mm. Like we have, so uh, Uber just invested $300 million into flying cars. We have flying cars in Dubai, all yep. those drone cars and stuff. Amazon's investing crazy yes. amounts of money into flying cars. All the automation, AI, you have yep. healthcare stuff. Like, yep. I mean, you have huge changes. Elon Musk just said there will probably not be steering wheels in cars in the next 10 years. Yes. Like crazy. Yeah. <laughs> These automated cars. <laughs> so, and they're kind of like, why now? Yeah. Because we've had, we had an electric car, what, 1920 something? Yes, right. We've had this stuff for a while. Mm -hmm. Why is it all happening now? Like, mm -hmm. it, it feels like, doesn't it feel like all of a sudden everything's just blowing up? Is right. it like all fake? Or are they mm -hmm. just blowing smoke? And they talk about, it's finally the convergence of all these technologies. Mm -hmm. So the fact that we can converge 5G, mm -hmm. which true 5G, like we have fake 5G on our phones right, right now. Yeah. True 5G, the reason it's so powerful is it allows data to be transferred gigabits at, you know, per second, right. multiple gigabits per yeah. second to your car to self-drive. It needs that much data for a, for a drone to mm -hmm. fly yep. and it needs it everywhere. Yep. And for AI to work and compute all that, trend, you need high-speed internet, you need AI at the same time, yeah. you need blockchain technology to keep it transactional, you need a Starlink all at the same time. And it's all happening. To make it happen. Mm -hmm. And that's why these guys go through and they, they he's like, we're going to have total sky ports mm -hmm. by 2026. They, they, you know, where your drone would pick you up at your house, you'd fly to your office, yep. come back. Yep. And then they go through the implications of that. Well, and they say like right now, mm -hmm. a third of all major cities are de dedicated to parking. Yep. Okay. Now you have a third, like 33% more real estate available in urban areas. You can build on right. or move or whatever. What are you going to do with it? Yeah. Anyways, just, they go through a really cool mm -hmm. book though. The future is faster than you think that there's all these technologies coming together. God, dude, that is so much. Cause I'm obviously, I do a lot of stuff in Amazon and I'm really looking at this closely because when Amazon's investing in these flying cars, yeah. they're saying cars are inefficient. We want to be able to deliver the product same day anywhere in the world. Yeah. And I was talking again with Ed Milet about this and he was talking about this, this revolution where it's going to change everything where it's going to change restaurant business because because now you can door dash something from LA that will get here in 30 minutes. Yeah, it's crazy. You know, like as opposed to like, like now the restaurant business, like as opposed to these big fast food things, getting it from right there, it doesn't matter as much. Everything you do, you order on your phone, it's all connected, right? Uh -huh. And I, dude, it's funny how you bring up China. They say, if you want to see the future, go to China or Japan, mm. right? Because in, in, regards to, in regards to regulations and how things roll out, what you're talking about, like why is this now coming out? Well, we've had flying cars for a really long time. People mm. don't know that. Yeah. But, in the amount, the, but the amount of regulation and red tape like placed in by the government yep. and how fast things can actually roll out to the public, we are always a certain amount of time period behind on how, what our actually technology is in our lifestyle, <laughs> we right? We hate it, right? Yeah. If you go to Cuba, they're still driving cars from the 1950s because yep. they're over regulations. Yep. In a lot of countries, it's like that. They're so far behind because you cannot roll stuff out to society. America's a little more revolutionary, even though we are heavily regulated and becoming more regulated we're able to roll things out pretty quickly, but in places like Japan, they're able to roll things out even faster. Mm -hmm. That's why you see the craziness of being able to walk into a McDonald's and they already know your order based on your face. Yeah, and you can just crazy. talk to a thing and get you your order. Yep. And like, and then also by the time you walk out, it already know it already has a connection to your account based on your facial recognition. So it charges you for it. Yeah, in yep. Amazon, some places they're playing yep. around this where you just walk in and out. There's no more purchasing. There's no more swip swipe. You know, it's yep. just this process that happens that you just have this account, you work on this thing, you know, like that's how it is, right? Dude, the facial ID it, thing. That's scary. Scares the scares crap the out of me. Scares the crap out of me as well. So I walked in through an airport. I was flying back from Mexico. I hit the airport through customs. Yeah. Me and my wife walk up. Yeah. And he goes, hi, Bridger. Hi, Lauren. And I was like, huh? He goes, hey, can I see your passports? And I was like, I asked him, yeah. how'd you know my face? I heard, how'd you know my name? Yeah. And he goes, oh, we have facial ID. I already, I knew who you were walking up. And I was like, Frick. Fuck. In like, Mexico. <laughs> in this, well, this was in the United States. This is the United okay, States. Okay, okay. I was about to say, but even, st even but still. But I was like, yeah. huh. And I think it's funny that the old phrase goes like, China tells you how they're restricting the U.S. just does it. Doesn't yeah. tell you what they're doing. Right. But because China's the same. Yeah, that all is just, it's, it's, it's fascinating, but yeah. also it's scary. Scary too. shit. Because China yeah. has what their social score. Have you heard about that? Yeah. Oh my gosh. So like if you Let's jaywalk, if you jaywalk, yeah. it tracks your face and goes, yeah. okay, that person's social score yeah. is now lower. Yes. And now it's more expensive to get a bus ticket. Yes. Your, your entire life becomes more expensive based on <sighs> your sit. I call it the citizen score. Yeah. The citizen score. Yeah. 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 yeah you were, but like, dude, oh, right now we so have a credit scary. score and I talk to you entrepreneurs yeah. all around 
the time. Like you have no idea how much our entire economy revolves around your score, yeah. your credit score. So get your credit score right. But now you see this and you like hear about the social score. You even hear our politicians talk about oh, yeah. it and we're getting political here. I love that because I get political all the time. <laughs> yeah. You talk about over-regulation. You talk about infringing on our freedom yeah. as, as, as citizens in this country. This is a this is a reality we are actually faced with yeah. of get they want to get rid of credit scores and implement citizen scores. Yeah. If you're not wearing your mask, it dings your credit score. <laughs> yeah. Right? If you're if you commit a crime, they know it's everywhere. And this is this ties in with 5G. When you have a 5G world, you can see all. Yep. It's the big brother, the all-seeing yep. eye, the eagle eye, whatever you want to call yep. it, yep. that sees and regulates all. And this is the great trade that my dad said calls the great trade. When people want security, you have to give up freedom. Mm, yeah. Yep, but yep. in order to have freedom, you have to take it or security into your own hands. Yep. And they always, every t tyrannical government that has ever come out has always taken away freedom with the statement of it's for your own benefit. It's for your health yep. and for your security. We're doing this for you, for your benefit. And at the same time, where's the ethical cutoff point Dude, of so what over-regulation yep. are you going to take it to? And are we as an American people going to stand for this? Because right? on one hand, that yeah, sounds awesome. I walk into a store. I don't have to pull. I just grab my stuff. Sure, I walk right. out and yeah. it pays and charges my account. That sounds really convenient. Yeah. So then, convenient. And then it's yeah. like the freedom. Anyways, that's if people ask. Right. Like, why is the U.S. a little bit slower? That's why. It's why? This conversation yes. of like, yeah, we could do it. Right. But at what cost? Yes. Right. Right. And is it, do you think it's inevitable though? Do you think, I think it is. You think it's inevitable? I do. We're there. I, like, I, it's it's already happen. happened. Yeah. That's what people are saying is it's already been implemented. So we're already too late to the fight. And that shouldn't, that shouldn't demoralize people. That should invigorate you a little bit more to stand up and say, we need to make a change because it's already happening. Mm. It's just because it's happening behind, like behind the scenes, there's still changes that can be made. There's still things we need to implement. I was talking to Tim Ballard about this. He 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 wants to go on this. Now, he just announced on this podcast, the Freedom Tour, where we yeah. have to talk about keeping our freedom intact in this country or yeah. we will lose it. Yeah. We're always one generation away from losing freedom. Yeah. And I don't care how convenient life can get. It's still not worth losing our freedom. We can't have this technology without overstepping. We can do it. We have to put our heads together and do that, though. And it, like, that's the thing: is is it inevitable? Yeah, it kind of is. Yeah. But what are we going to do about it? Mm. That's the thing: is just because it's going to happen doesn't mean we shouldn't push back in some way or make sure and hold it's the people the accountable. Right way, at least. Exactly. Yeah. We can figure out a way to do it the right way. We figured out skyscrapers. We figured out so many things in this country. We can figure that out. Yeah. You know, but that's why this conversation is so. I know. Important. I think it's interesting though, like to dive in. What is that? That like for the right. face, idea, let's just talk about social score, right? Yeah, like that concept. Like, what is the middle ground, right? Like, is right. it is it that we do the facial ID thing, but we don't actually have a score? But uh, oh. the government probably has a score on their, you know, they like the Patriot yeah. Act, like yeah. in the back, and they don't tell us about <laughs> right. it. Like, they have a score they're using through Instagram. If you're not a good boy, you're gonna get shut down. 100. They Instagram, they have Facebook. That. Yep. It's already like if you're not a good boy, your YouTube shut down, and yep. a lot of our business runs on social media, yep. right? So it's already implemented in a way. That's why I say it's kind of already inevitable. It's, it's already here. There, yeah, you know, it's already here. So what do you do? Yeah. Well, that's a that's a million dollar question that we have I to know, put our heads weird, together yeah. and start discussing. You do know, you think, do you think Metaverse is gonna take over? What's your I thoughts? don't. You don't. Okay. I don't, I don't think it'll take over because at the end of the day, you still have to live your life. Mm. You, you know, there's still a beating heart that has to plug into the metaverse. Mm, yeah. Right. So there will all like, there will never be a total replacement. I, but I do, I don't believe it'll take over, okay. but I do believe it will be an inevitable piece of our, of our lifestyle. Yeah. So when people say take over, I think I've heard some people throw out this stuff where they say, uh, the, the digital world will be more important than the physical world. Yeah. For some, that's the definition of yes. the metaverse, right? Exactly. The moment it becomes exactly, yeah. and I believe it will be for some. I believe it already is. Yeah. There's a lot of people who I know who they're there, and I'm not gonna like. This is how I compare it to their life in the game or their life in the digital world is already more important. Yeah. The the character they create in the video game, right? The character that they live in Sims or whatever. I just look. I look at the metaverse as Sims on steroids, mm -hmm. right? You create your life in this world, and it's so enticing because you can have whatever life you want. You can create your life. That is so enticing. Okay, here's the thing though. Talk to me. Me and you are both on social media. Right. Think that's a version of the metaverse. It is. One thousand percent. And think about if if your all your uh Instagram and right. social media accounts were taken away right now. Right. That would obviously hurt your business Very a lot. Much. Yes. Hurt you a lot. And yes. something you care about. Right. And it's like that's a definition of the metaverse right there. Right. And so it's like, and then back to the question of does that matter more than your real life? Mm. Does your 
number of followers, your blue mm-hmm. check, your right. whatever mm-hmm. engagement you get on these posts. Right. And it's like to a lot of people it already does. And I'm that like, that is their life, isn't it? You know, I think about it. I'm like, right. I don't have that big of a social media following, but right. I'm like, you know what? <laughs> to me, actually, it does matter. Yeah. Matt, like, especially like we're trying to grow a YouTube channel. Yes. And so I'm like, mm-hmm. I really do care about those metrics. I, absolutely. And I, I really care about how much right. I click through rate and what, how do, do they like this video? What, yeah. When do they hop off? And I was like, I was like, you know what? Like that basically is the life you've created and what you put out there. Yeah, right? I'm, I'm already in the metaverse. You built your brain. <laughs> but that's the thing is just, yeah. I don't, when you say take over, yeah, I, there's true. some people who take it to the extreme that that will be their life. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, t- I'm here to tell her, I, I believe it's not going to take over, but I believe it'll be an inevitable piece of what we do in business. Yeah. It'll be an inevitable piece of what you do in your life in general, but will it take over our lives? It, how can it, you know, like, I mean, that's, that's such yeah. an interesting question. Cause now I'm saying like, well, if it takes over your life, Instagram's already taken over your life, you know, so I, spend, to what I extent, spend a decent amount on Instagram every day. Right. I post multiple times a day and yeah. I do, and I'm like, I mean, right. That, like it already takes a significant yeah. amount of my time. And I know, I know some people, here's where yeah, I, when I say take over because some people go to the extreme where they say you can now download your life. Yeah, right. You can live in your life and the yeah. whole idea of like uh, this and back, back to Elon Musk, where you can have that chip in your brain. You can download memories. Yeah. You can download everything in your brain. They're saying you can now download that in the metaverse. Yeah. I'm like, OK, that's that. OK, OK. Maybe I'm just not seeing it, but yeah. I'm saying like, well, you still have to have a heart beating. Yeah. You still yeah. have to have a life here. Yeah. You know, because if you don't, well, where like the download, like you still got to have something plugged into and the plug into is yeah. your physical body. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, th- and that's where I think when people say take over, I'm like, if it goes that extreme and I, here's the thing, I believe it will for some people, there are people who are addicts and will live there. They live they're They're plugged into they're already like, doing that. They're already uh, doing whether that. it's addiction with drugs, whether it's addiction with Instagram, there's addiction and there it takes over their lives. I do believe it will take over people's lives, but I believe I don't, but here's the, where it comes down to is the drug dealer never consumes. Steve Jobs never let his kids have iPads, mm. right? You know, like you look at this stuff, they don't they don't t- partake of what they put out for the public, right? The drug dealer never consumes, so I believe it will be something that takes over, and I hate to say this, but the lower class. Mm, interesting. Drugs take over the lower class. Addiction takes over the lower yeah. class. You find more video games in the lower class, mm. right? You find the things that are easier more addictive. Easier to dopamine, too. Exactly. Yeah, it's easier to get it's that easier. It's yeah. easier. And what it, what it is, it's the place to escape. Yeah. But the people who have a good life here and recognize a life and have built their life, I don't think they will be so inclined to to live their life 100% in there. Yep. They will live their life here while everyone loves their life there. I think, I don't know if it's called Ready Player One, yeah. but you get the rich people who still have the life here, but in the suburbs and the poor areas, everyone is just connected. Just plugged in. Everyone's yeah. just plugged in. So yes, do I think it'll take over in some ways? In 100%? No. But that's the scary, that's how yeah. I see it. And it's scary to me. No, I think you're spot on. And I yeah. think right now, back to that, my, I was kind of pushing on social media, but social yeah. media right now is a reflection of your everyday life. Every, absolutely. And my everyday life. Right. It's of my real life. Yes. And and, uh, you know, I think that's the difference of right now, at least yes. if social media in the future was a reflection of my virtual life, that I don't be, know. that's different, right? You know what I mean? <laughs> Anyways, I think it's, I think it's a funny conversation, I guess. Dude, we'll, this we'll is incredible happens, conversations but, yeah. that we we, we have to have, Yeah, we have to have these conversations. And honestly, I don't fucking know. Yeah. And I guess we're going to figure it's gonna it be out. Weird. But I, I like your point of the rich versus the poor. Cause yeah. I think people who are. And I, by the definition of rich, you could just call that happy. Sure, exactly. Yeah. Just right, like, that's a great point. Just like, hey, I'm I'm wealthy inside and out. Yes, you know what I mean? Right. And I'm happy here. And this yeah. is great. Now, yeah, I, I do, you know, my meetings on the metaverse or whatever, but right. like I think it's the people who are want that drug hit. Yes. That'll that'll you know overextend it's themselves very, on it. Oh, it's the escape. Everyone yeah. looks for the escape. Whatever yeah. it is, whether it's through pornography, whether it's through social media, whether it's through you know, like drugs, there's always the escape and you don't want to escape if you don't love your life, you don't love yourself, yeah. right? And so I love that I actually tie that because I, I agree with people who are content with who they are in their life, I don't think we'll plug in. I think there's, a. I know a lot of rich people who do not have phones. Mm-hmm. They actually disconnect wow. themselves from yeah. phone and they find themselves more successful in their business by not having phones. They let their assistants and everybody else have the yeah. phones, right? They disconnect from everything. They don't have video games. They don't do TV. And I know, and they just, they focus on their life and the yeah, true happiness cool. that comes in and that can never fully be replaced. And I, obviously I believe in God. And there's a reason for that because I think we're playing God, yeah. right? We're playing God. We're creating this entirely new world that cannot replace the true joy and happiness 
of the life and the people who get that won't plug in mm, the yeah. people who don't get that will absolutely live their entire life plugging into that and dude I, like you're gonna see people who lit like like they're gonna create these rooms or like these places where you can live in there and like just honestly maybe they put you on a tube and just give you the nutrients you need just to live that way you yeah, know yeah and that, that becomes more of their reality kind of like yeah. inception where they're yeah, saying yeah. that is their their dream has become their yeah, reality yeah. who are you to tell them otherwise yeah well, the fact that you still have a beating heart, yeah. still that there's a soul inside you that's yeah. bigger than you, than your you know your mental state of being that escapes in this life. Yeah. That God created this life for us. Yeah. Then Mark Zuckerberg created that life for you. <laughs> you <know? laughs> yeah, I think that's awesome. <laughs> Anyways, so but I think you and me are gonna have a lot of awesome conversation about yeah, that. Yeah, that's interesting. Forward. I know, dude. If there's anything you love to leave the audience with, what would it be? Um. Yeah. Final words. Yeah. I would say uh, two things. Mm -hmm. Uh, you touched on it a couple of times. I am a big believer in God and Amen. I, uh, I think God has pushed me into businesses mm -hmm. and, and to, I pray about every decision I make, yeah. whether it's business or family or life. I think mm -hmm. God is in, and some people think it's only God's only for religious things. No, God loves us inside yeah. and out and yeah. for everything we're doing. Mm -hmm. And so I'm a big believer in God and, and, uh, and you should consult God on, on everything you do. And I, I think he'll, it. he'll respond to you and get back to you. And, and, uh, you know, I think, I think there's a lot to that. I think it's, a lot of people can, you know, can say whatever about it. But I think when you live life and you either see the dark or the light and you, there's something more, you yes. know, Amen. and, um, I'm hundred percent into that. The second thing I would say is we, we touched on this as well. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll share a quick story from my dad. Yeah. We would, as a kid, he would do this all the time to me. We'd walk into a restaurant there and be a friend of his. He's a mm -hmm. Korean man that moved mm -hmm. here a couple of years ago. And he goes, look at that guy. And he goes, Bridger, that guy moved here five years ago. Mm didn't speak English, yep. still can't speak English. <laughs> and yet he's got two restaurants and a laundromat down the street. Yes. And he's living the American dream mm -hmm. five years here. He goes, Bridger, you grew up in America. Yeah. You speak English as your native language. <laughs> right. You're in schools. Uh -huh. You have a computer. You also speak Mandarin. And I speak, I speak Mandarin too. <laughs> He goes, you have no excuse. Mm. You have no excuse. If that guy can be successful, you have no excuse mm. not to be successful. He, he did it all the time to me, pointed out all the time. Mm. And I thought, it kind of hit me like, shoot, he's right. Yeah. Like right now, and I mentioned the earth is flat. Ever since the internet came out, you're now, anybody with a smartphone yeah. can compete against you. Yep. And and what it's done now, now you can sell to anybody. You do a lot of Amazon businesses. Yeah. There's people on Amazon that sell freaking pet rocks. I mean, people on Amazon you. sell whatever, <laughs> They're right? They're making money selling <laughs> potatoes with faces on them, bro. <laughs> you you have no excuse to not no. be successful in yep. this world. It, yep. It's a decision. Yes. It's a decision. Like, you know what? I, I'm not that guy. I don't want to make a lot of money. I don't want to be successful. Cool. If that's your, if that's your persona, mm -hmm. awesome. Yep. But if you're someone that wants a little bit more, mm -hmm. has that call of contrast contribution. You have that mm -hmm. calling to do something more. You have no excuse. Mm -hmm. And for people that listen to this podcast, you're already there. You're already listening. You're consuming, you're learning. Mm -hmm. I would say buy courses, find mentors, go after it. And guess what? The risks really aren't that big. They're not. The last thing I'll leave you with is, is this, I had a great mentor at BYU mm -hmm. and I was debating, I was asking, should I do this business? Right. And I had, I was fearful yeah. back to your second thing, yes. right. Of yeah. courage. Right. I was fearful. I was like, man, I should I do this. It's a big mm -hmm. risk. He goes, Bridger. He goes, do you have parents? And I was like, yeah. And he goes, if, if whether to divorce or not, if you failed, could you like move in with them and, you know, yeah. like live with them and stuff? And I was like, yeah, I mean, like, uh, like honestly, embarrassing, but uh, yeah. yeah, he's like, right. if, you know, I understand it'd be embarrassing, but yeah. like, could you move in with them? Would you have a bed, like some food you could eat? And I was like, well, yeah, like, you know, I, obviously my parents would let like, probably right. not for 10 years, right. but for, you know, a couple months yeah. for sure. And he goes, he goes, then what excuse do you have? <laughs> so and I was like, what do you mean? And he goes, your worst case scenario is you fail, you lose all your money, you move in with your parents. Yeah. <laughs> your, your worst case scenario is a warm bed at night, food in the fridge, and parents that love you. Amen. You live, not, your worst case scenario is better than 90% of the world. Yes. What, what excuse do you have yeah. to not go try this business? Yeah. And I was like, shoot. Mm -hmm. And I saw another stat. If you're on government welfare in the United States, you make more money than, it's, it's either 80 or 90% of the world. Yes. On government welfare yeah. in the United States. And we still complain. And we complain. I mean, it's like, it's like this is a you're in a totally different world. Yes. And of risk. Yeah. And if you're in the in the United States listening to this call, you're probably in that group. And there you have no excuse not to take a chance on yourself, not to go after it, not mm -hmm. to try crap. 
for, you know, a couple hundred bucks, like go for it, buy yeah. a course, put it on a credit card. Like, you know what I mean? Do it. Put yourself in the fire. Uh -huh. Anyways, I'll leave the audience with that. That's what I would say. But hey, man, awesome. that's some fire right there, yeah, brother. Bro, it's, been, it's been awesome. Dude, you. seriously. Thanks for coming on, brother. Yeah. And make sure everyone go follow this guy, Bridger underscore Pennington. We're going to connect everything at the bottom as we always do. Is there any other way people can uh, reach out to you? <laughs> be better way to connect with you. Yeah. The last thing, the thing I'll say, we actually built a free course on funds. Okay. So we talk about courses. Yeah. We said, let's put together 30, 40 videos, mm. give people downloadable documents, all that kind of stuff. You guys want to learn about investment funds? Um, it's www.investmentfundsecrets.com slash free gift. Wow. So investmentfundsecrets.com okay. slash free gift, or just DM me. We can send it to you. And you might ask like, that sounds fishy or whatever. Yeah. I'll just be transparent. The goal is we made a free course. I want to knock your socks off. So yeah. you come in, I want to freaking teach you a ton of crap. I want you to go, holy crap. This guy's incredible. I learned a ton from him. Yeah. And yeah, we have higher coaching programs and you can work with me directly. And I hope I give you enough value up front that people are like, oh, okay, yeah, I'll pay him for that. You know what I mean? That's that's just me being transparent, okay? Hey. Put your name and email in and you get a full free course and I hope to knock your socks off, give you a ton of value. Go get your socks on. Uh, guys, <laughs> do it. I'm serious. Go learn. There's no there's no harm in you learning that shit. There's everything for you to gain. Go, go do it. We're going to link that in the bio and, you know, he's going to upsell you and buy it because <laughs> it's worth it. What this dude has accomplished, what he's helped his students accomplish is absolutely incredible. I, I'm so grateful to call you friend and uh, I hope everyone Every one of you guys take advantage of the opportunity. Go follow Bridger. This dude's a stud. He's going to change the world. Appreciate you.